Um, good afternoon and welcome to the Forex Street webinar. Okay, my name is Ian Coleman and I'm going to be your host uh, for the next hour. I uh, used to be one of the uh, regular bloggers on the site, had the blog Samurai Trader. Uh, it's been a while uh, since I've hosted a webinar for uh, FX Street. So uh, if you can bear with me, I'd appreciate it. Okay, I'm one of the four analysts at PIA First Trader. We're a proprietary research, research and signals provider. Uh, we cover 11 FX pairs, seven indices, and four fixed income products on a daily basis. Okay, our team of analysts have a combined market experience for over 80 years in the market. Okay, let's get started. Uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, as you well know, uh, Ishimoto Cloud. Okay, so how is the Ishimoto Cloud formulated? Now, at first glance, it looks quite complicated. Okay, once you actually get the logistics uh, of the Ishimoto Cloud and you understand them, it is quite a good tool uh, to use while trading FX or any market. Okay, there are some pitfalls, false breakouts, uh, which we're going to talk about today uh, that you need to be aware of. Okay, here we've got uh, a basic Japanese candles, uh, candlestick chart formation. It's actually euro dollar. Okay, next I've overlaid the uh, the Ishimoto cloud. Can everybody see that? Okay, it's uh, it's not blurred on the screen. Great. Okay. So here we've got the Kumo cloud. Okay, don't worry about the colour. Uh, of the Kumo, the actual depth and where the projection of the Kumo is the important factor. Okay, so the Kumo is made up of the Senko span A and the Senko span B. Okay, Senko span A is the average of the Tenkan Sen and the Kijun Sen uh, projected 26 periods forward. Okay, the reason it's 26 periods is that uh, Japanese working month is a total of 26 days. Okay, and we're going to talk about how the Tenken and the Kijun line are formulated as well in a minute. Okay, Senko span B is the average of the Tenken Sen and the Kijun Sen 52 periods forward or two months. Okay, next we've got the Tenken Sen which is the turning or trigger line. Now, on this chart here, it's this purple line and should be the closest to the price action. Okay, this is similar to a moving average, a simple moving average, apart from the fact it plots the midpoint, okay, of the high and the low of the last nine periods or nine sessions. Now obviously a moving average, simple moving average, takes the average of the last period. So in this way it differs. And when we get onto the live charts, you'll notice that the send lines produce what we call flats. Okay, this is when the market is trading in between the high and the low of those periods, either nine periods or 26 periods. And at these periods, well, or when we have these flats, it's an indication of a non-trending market or a range-bound market. And that is also one of the hidden qualities, if you like, of, uh, of Ishimoko Cloud. So the Kijun Sen, the standard line, on here it's the green line, is 26 periods. Okay, so it plots the midpoint of the high and the low of the last 26 periods. Now they used uh, similar to moving average in the fact that they need to be in order um, to confirm uh, the trend. Uh, can it be helpful for really small time frames? No, is the answer. Um, because obviously candlestick, Japanese candlestick formations are made up um, of Japanese made up made from the uh, from from, Jap from the Japanese, okay? The cloud is also obviously uh, made uh, from uh, the Japanese has very few um, written books or reports on how to trade 
um, the candlestick formations uh, in in English. Um, they use it in longer time frames, okay, for larger moves, namely weekly and uh, and daily uh, chart formations. But it can be used down into an hourly chart. Um, you could you could look it all the way down to a five minutes, but um, without price action, um, it's really uh, not not that beneficial to be perfectly honest. It give you too many false, false breakouts. Um, as with a lot of chart analysis, I always think that the the bias or should be taken from a lot larger time frame. So. Before when I used to have a, a blog on uh, FX3, this was going back three, four years ago. Uh, we actually called it time frame breakdowns, and that was taking a currency pair. On, on a daily basis, we'll take another currency pair, um, and we'll break it down from a weekly chart to a daily chart to a four hourly, then an hourly chart to try and um, get a feel for the, for the overall flow for that currency. Excuse me, just have a drink of water. Um, and Ishimoku Cloud also benefits from, from time frame breakdown. So you really want to take a bias from your higher time frame and then break it all the way down. But I wouldn't I wouldn't advise going um, under a one hour period. I use I use them purely on a one hour chart. Um, what are my charts? These are um, CQG charts, but because um, when I have the live charts on, because of the amount of power that it takes out PC, I've actually got pro real time charts on, uh, for, for when we use them later on. Okay, no problem. Um, so next we're on to the Chiku's fan. Okay, this is the lagging line. Now this is a very important factor in um, Ishimoku cloud trading that a lot of people ignore. A lot of time a, a trader would just see a breakout of um, a chart formation. And um, and they'll think it's a, a, a decent breakout, and they'll just go with the flow. The Chiku span, the lagging line, needs to be in order, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. So what is the Chiku span? Okay, the Chiku span plots price action, the close of the last candle, 26 periods behind uh, behind the current price. Okay. I know it sounds complicated, but when we get to the uh, to, to the live charts and we start to explain it, doesn't look that uh, that uh, that bad. Okay, so the cloud breakout. Next, we're going to talk about the cloud breakout. Now, here we have. Let me just see if I can zoom in a bit. That's better. Okay, here we have a a good breakout. So we've got an engulfing candle, which takes us into the cloud. First and foremost, in most of my analysis, I take um, price or, or candlestick formations as the top priority, if you like. Okay, so I'm looking for bullish candles, uh, bullish engulfing candles. I'm looking for insider armies, which are warning of a pause in price action. Okay, and I'm then combining this, overlaying it uh, with uh, other analytical tools i.e. Ishimoku Cloud. So here at the top we get a bullish engulfing candle which takes us into the cloud and then we have the breakout here. Okay. Now the send lines have to be in order. So the Tenkin Sen, which is closest to the price action on a, on a downward breakout, has to be below the Kijun Sen. Okay. So the Tenkin Sen and the Kijun Sen have to be in order. Okay. Then we get to the Chiku Span. Now the Chiku span here on this breakout was below price action 26 periods before. So this is our breakout. I'm not going to count the periods because I know it's here. We did it earlier. Okay. And this Chiku span is below price action. Okay. If it's above price action, do not trade the break because it is a false breakout, even if the send lines are still in order. Okay. Uh, do we ever trade when price is in the cloud? Yeah, we're going to talk about that as well in a minute. Um, there's a bias when it's in the cloud. 
Only a slight bias, but there is a bias, okay? So support and resistance. Obviously, um, in its rawest form, the Ishimoto cloud or the Kumo cloud is good for support and resistance. So when we're below the cloud, obviously the bias is to the downside and the cloud is used as resistance. When we're above the cloud, uh, we're obviously trading to the upside and the cloud is then used as support. So here, just going back to our first example, okay, we break out the cloud. We know we've got a good breakout, everything's in order, and then it comes back to test the cloud. Okay, this happens in lots of chart formations, most commonly in um, triangle or wedge breakouts. Okay, on a, on a wedge, it's obviously like a cold spring, so we've got an upward wedge, it breaks out, a lot of the time, the market will then come back to test the breakout line, and that's obviously a good point of entry. Here, we've got to come, it's come back to test the breakout line. We then get a bearish engulfing red candle, and price action obviously moves to the downside. And here we've got another retest um, about four or five hours afterwards. Okay, so inside the cloud, as um, Harley just asked, what is the bias when you go inside the cloud? Now the bias inside the cloud, if we move into the cloud from below, then the bias is still to the downside. Okay, also if we come to into the cloud from above, then the bias is still to the upside. Don't use it, um, don't just think, well, it's broken into the cloud, I'm, 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 I'm still going to sell it. As with all uh, trading opportunities, you should look for price action. Okay, and here, I wouldn't say this is the best signal, but we've got an inside army candle, and then a doji, and price moves to the downside. Uh, we then push up, and here we spike to the top of the cloud. So both lines of the cloud are used as resistance. Okay, we spike to the top of the cloud. We get an outside Okay, it's very volatile, but we get an outside engulfing candle, and then it moves to the downside. Here we get the breakout, and you can see it comes back and retests the cloud. Okay, lagging line. So we've already talked about the lagging line, the fact that it needs to be underneath price action. Um, there's one other factor that's very important with regard to the lagging line. Okay, to minimise the amount of false breakouts that you have. And in this example here, okay, this price action looks very bearish. So we get a engulfing candle after a rejection of the high. We get a very decent green candle to the downside, but it's a false breakout. Okay, the send lines are not in order. They're actually equal at the point of the break and the lagging line even though it's below price action it hasn't broken the bottom of the cloud okay this cloud on numerous occasions will act as support um, for the lagging line so the lagging line will come back uh, sorry come down it will touch uh, the side of the kumo and then it will break to the upside if we could actually put a horizontal line on there, it would probably literally just spike through uh, the bottom of this uh, of this Kuma, okay? And then here, this aggressive move up uh, to the upside. There's, a, there's other indications as well that this breakout was false. We've got an inside Arami, which um, shows investor indecision, okay? And here, another inside bar. So you've got two um, inside... Harami candles here, and then you get a break of this high, and it moves back to the upside. And on, on the upside break, okay, the send lines are in order, and the lagging line is above price action and above the cloud at the time of this upside break. Okay, has anybody got any questions just about how uh, the cloud is formulated uh, with regards to the send lines 
the lagging line, what makes the Kumo. Obviously, the, the bigger the Kumo, um, the more support and resistance you have. If you're coming towards the Kumo, if the price action is coming towards the Kumo, and it's strong, um, and the Kumo cloud is thin, then it's shown that there is a lack of support at that level, and there's a good chance of a breakout. If um, if the cloud is large, if it's if it's got a lot of depth, um, then there's a good chance that it's not going to break to the downside, and it is just a correction. Okay, I'm not advising anybody to use um, Ishimoto Cloud as a, a, a pure tool for trading. Okay, price action should be overlaid. You should watch. Um, Trend sentiment, okay, but as an add-on, it is a very, very good tool to use. Um, what I would advise um, a lot of you guys to do as well is just to have this. If you've got a chart package that lets you have numerous different charts open, have this in the background and just click onto it when you're looking to take a trade. That way, you'll be able to see whether or not you're buying into support or resistance, how thick is the uh, is the cloud? Am I likely to get through it? Are the send lines in order when it's when it's approaching the cloud, um, etc. Um, yeah, the the bigger picture, the daily chart, like I said, will give you the bigger picture. You can break it down into um, into the uh, four hourly and hourly charts, like we said previously or earlier on. Um, it's not really advisable. Uh, to take it all the way down into sort of five minutes and one minute charts. It's not it's not a scalping tool. Um, just answer these questions. Uh, the lines, yeah, sure, no problem at all. We'll just flip back. Okay, so just to repeat, Kumo Cloud um, is made up of the span lines, okay? Tenko span lines. The depth of the cloud is important. The color of the cloud is not. Okay. The Tenko span A and B uh, form the Kumo. As we said before, it, this is projected forward. So projected 26 periods for span A, 26, uh, 52 periods for span B. Reason being is the one month and two month period of the Japanese candle uh, calendar, I should say. Okay, and the Tenken line, which is your turning line or trigger line, okay, you really want price action to be below the uh, the Tenken line. As you can see, all the way down here, if we just zoom in a bit, it's acting as resistance. It's like a um, it's like a nine moving average, but I don't I don't use nine moving average. Um, I don't use twenty moving average. I use different. Uh, moving averages on my charts, but you can see here it just keeps on clipping this uh, this turning line until she breaks through. And at that point, you actually get the move back up. Yes, I'm going to put some real charts on uh, in a second. Okay, okay so that's a 10 and cent, and that's, as we said, like a moving average. It's made up of the midpoint of the high and low of the last nine periods. I'll just take a note on my pad that we've got to talk about flats when we get to um, when we get to the live charts. Okay, so just repeating, Kijun standard standard line is similar um, in formation, apart from it's the high and low of the last 26 periods. Now, when we get um, consolidating periods or some consolidating patterns. So if we get, um, for example, see if we can find one when we go to the uh, live charts. If we get a, a wedge formation or a triangle formation or a channel, then these span lines, oh, sorry, the send lines will go flat. You see here we have a flat, it's a very mild one, but this is this period of consolidation. And that's basically what it's indicating. Now, if, if they both go flat, then it normally warns uh, that there is a formation, a chart formation that, uh, that is growing 
and it's either going to be a channel, as I said, or a triangle, maybe even a flank formation. Um, yes, but um, Lana's just asking if we um, if we if we combine the time frames, so look at four hours of uh, a daily four hour or four hour and hourly at the same time. Yes, uh, to get a bias, I'm looking at higher time frames, but I'm because I'm a day trader, I'm not looking or, or we're an I should say we're analysing the market uh, for intraday moves. Um, we want to be looking at shorter time frames. So we want to be looking at hourly or four hourly time frames. If we're looking to a bigger picture, if we're looking to uh, to trade in smaller units but over longer time frames, then there's no reason why you can't use it on a weekly or daily uh, daily chart. The only trouble is if you look to too many um, time frames, one's going to give you a bullish bias, one's going to give you a bearish bias. No one's going to give you a bearish bias. You're just going to get you're going to get paralysed because you won't know which uh, which direction to basically go in. Okay, any other questions about um, the slideshow uh, before we get to the live charts and uh, and analyse what's been going on or what is going on at present? No. Nope. Great. Now let's just drop it down. Can you guys see this chart now that I've got up? It's actually a cable chart, sterling dollar, uh, one hour time frame. Back. Okay, hold on a second. Any good now? Back up now. Okay. Okay, somebody pick a currency pair, preferably not Euro dollar, because we've just been talking about that one. And um, we'll see if we can break it down on uh, on signals. <laughs> Let's go to Aussie dollar. Okay, let's just draw it back a bit. Okay, so do you remember when I said initially, or in the... Um, when we're talking about the PowerPoints, about retests, about price action. Um, yeah, it's not great. Um, Bookie's just saying, is there a pair that it works on better than others? Um, strangely enough, the yen pairs, dollar yen, isn't that um, reliable um, with Ishimoto. Um, any, other, any, any other pair um, I found is all is, is beneficial. Um, I don't know why dollar yen um, doesn't seem to um, doesn't seem to work well, but it's out of experience. It's just one of the uh, one of the currency pairs that I don't really look to uh, with regards to Ishimoka. Okay, going back, uh, right, we've gone going back quite some time. This is a weekly chart, so we'll break it down here first. Okay, here we've got the breakout. Okay, if I count periods back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, that is the breakout line there. Okay, so on here is the brown line. And as this breaks out, it's above price action. So that's the first thing that we want to look at. So that's telling us it's, it's, a, it's a good breakout. Now here, we come back as I said previously, to test the cloud. And there, if I can zoom in a bit better, you can see that, is an engulfing bullish candle. Okay? It touches the turning line, it gives us a bullish engulfing candle, and the market then trends higher. Send lines are in order. Okay? And then obviously she moves up. Here, we move back down inside the cloud. Let's get rid of some of this. This is my analysis. Okay, so we move back inside the cloud. Remember that the bias is still to the upside, okay, until the cloud breaks. So here we get two spiking candles. Okay, not really pin to bottoms because they're not uh, 
they're not uh, they're not big enough. Okay, and here again is an engulfing candle. Here's another engulfing candle, and then we get the break to the upside. Come back, retest, retest, and then she moves higher again. Um, I'll just answer some of these questions. Would you say Shimoko is more relevant to yen pairs? I've already done that one. How would you look to exit the trade when using Ishimoko? Um, on price action, basically. You can look to the turning line. So you can look for a break of the turning line to exit the trade. Um, the textbook is to wait until the turning line and the other send line of um, the standard line, sorry, of, uh, of crossed. Um, I look for chart formations, so I look for, a, a, basically if I'm in a bullish trend, I would look for an insider army with a confirming candle to tell me that that trend is likely to come to an end, or I look for a bearish engulfing candle. Um, I know there are numerous uh, different chart formations that you can look to uh, to confirm uh, bullish and bearish trends inside soldiers, etc. Um, I believe that um, that those two chart formations are the most profitable or reliable. Okay, a bullish engulfing candle as well. I have a, a small twist on it, in on the basis that I want uh, the bullish engulfing candle. So going back to this one, I hope you can see it. Okay. Can't zoom in on these charts very well. Here is a bullish, a decent bullish engulfing candle. Now it engulfs the whole range of the previous candle, not just the body. I know the textbook uh, rule for an engulfing candle is the fact that the body just takes over. So obviously, in a bullish engulfing, the, the green body, the bullish candle takes over the body of the red candle. Obviously, bearish is is reversed. Um, what I like to see is a complete engulfment of price action of that previous candle because that basically says to me that not only did the market test the downside but it fully rejected it and, 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 and moved all the way to the upside. So it completely took over that previous candle um, and that is a far more reliable candle or bullish candle than just looking um, for the bodies to engulf. I mean, here we've got a bearish engulfing candle, but the market still ticks higher. Um, I'll be able to find numerous uh, occasions, I'm sure, if I look long enough. Here you go, a bearish engulfing candle, but it then gets engulfed by a bullish candle because it doesn't take out the full range. And also, obviously, the 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 best time to see a bearish or bullish engulfing candle is at the top or the bottom of a trend. If it's in the middle of a trend, yes it does normally confirm that that trend is going to continue, um, but obviously at the top or the bottom of a trend is when um, they're the most uh, beneficial and powerful, um, I believe. So here we came back in, as we said the bias is still to the upside comes up, retest, and then moves away. Um, that is actually an inside Arami candle, comes back, gets engulfed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're, talk, we're sort of getting off the subject a bit here. We really want to be talking uh, just about Ishimoko Cloud. Um, so here at the moment, we've come back into the cloud, bullish retest, and now we're inside. So the bias here on Aussie dollar, on a weekly chart, remember, is still to the upside, um, but this sort of bearish formation um, looks looks to the downside. That's why I'm trying not to confuse my analysis with with too many um, time frames. Okay, here's a here's a daily chart. Again, let's just sort of didn't catch me on the hop because we said. Um, pick pick a currency pair. Obviously, um, I've got all my uh, all my analysis on there as well. 
all my fib levels, etc. Excuse me. Okay, so let's look uh, back. This chart is playing me up a bit. Okay, here we have an example of a false breakout. Let's zoom in. Okay, as as with all technical analysis, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a bias. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will work 100% of the time. Obviously, a tool that works 60 or 70% of the time uh, is ample. Um, here, we've got a break to the downside. Okay, the send lines are just in order. Okay, and I can tell you here that the span is below uh, the price action, but it is a false breakout. Okay, inside a Rami, confirming candle, and then she breaks back to the upside. Again, here we move into cloud. Cloud is not quite used as support, but then breaks to the upside. This isn't the best example, I don't think. Um, here again, moves back into the cloud, uses the downside of the cloud as support, then moves back to the upside. Here we have a breakout. Okay, so it comes back to retest, very small uh, candle. Note, I could do about these crossover lines on here. Uh, note the inside of Rami off the top, never, the high never gets taken. Okay, it then moves down, small rejection candle, and then a break to the downside. Send lines are in order, and here, I think this is. 26 periods previously, okay, moves out and price moves back down. Okay, comes back to retest. Again, not uh, the best um, candle formation, but spike into the cloud and then again to move to the downside. Um, with regards to all the lines on the chart, the send lines and the um, and the lagging line, you really only want to take notice of um, the lagging line on the breakout, okay? After the breakout, it's to be ignored until the next breakout. The more important factor is the turning line, okay? You obviously want to be below price action or above price action. So here um, we've got an inside of Rami candle moves down. This is actually a very decent bullish engulfing candle, uh, but the price action didn't um, produce any upside, and we've come back inside the cloud. So at the moment, off the daily Aussie dollar chart, uh, the bias is still to the upside. Let's take it down to one hour. Has anybody got any, qu any questions at the moment? Um, is it helpful in, in commodities and stocks? Uh, yes, is the answer. Uh, it can be used on on uh, on any market. I don't use I don't use moving average crossovers, so I don't have a tendency to use uh, crossovers uh, on the cloud either. Uh, what I'm looking for um, first and foremost is a bias. Um, I'm then looking um, for price action, bearish price action to stay underneath um, the turning line until I get a chart formation that basically tells me. Um, or warns me of a possible change of trend, which we talked about previously, either uh, an inside candle or, or a bullish candle. Um, with regards to the cloud, the thinner the cloud, the less support and resistance 
uh, we have. Now we were going to talk about the um, the flats as well when we get flat. The saying that that normally uh, warns of um, of consolidation. I don't use um, I Mike. Um, I've always used the RSI 15 period. Um, I just find it more reliable. Um, I use it for a bias on a one hour chart. So I'm basically if it's trading above um, the 15, 15 uh, RSI on very short time fr on, on the hourly, then it means in short time frames I should still be looking for bullish signals. It's very, in its rawest form, if it's trading below um, the 50 level, um, then I should be looking for um, for bearish signals. Um, I know I've got MACD on here. I don't really look to MACD for um, for divergence. Um, I like it to confirm that it's in the same direction as the uh, as the RSI. First, first and foremost, in my analysis, I'm looking at chart formations. No, I haven't. Um, so first and foremost, I'm looking at chart formations. Then I'm looking at trend. Then I'm looking at support and resistance areas. Uh, for that, I'm using the cloud. I'm using uh, fib levels. Um, not 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 trend lines to a great extent, but in larger time frames, if I can see a wedge. Or a triangle formation um, on four hour or, or daily charts, and I obviously take note of that. Um, consolidating uh, chart formations, I take note of um, symmetrical triangles, uh, channels, etc. So it's not, as I said, th this can be used. Um, Ishimoto um, can be used as a pure trading system. I wouldn't advise that, uh, as as we said. At the beginning of the um, of the webinar, it's far better to use it as an add-on tool um, to show you support and resistance. I mean, you can see here this thinning of the cloud basically tells you that there is no support and resistance at the markets. As we know, if anybody's been trading the markets for the last uh, week and a half, two weeks. Is extremely choppy. Okay, there are very few trends, um, and that's basically what this is showing. And this thinning of the cloud. Um, obviously, when when we get decent trends, we get decent support and resistance. Okay, so you've got to remember it's projected forward, so we get decent support and resistance levels after trend. If there's very little trend. Then there's very little support and resistance um, projected 26 periods um, forward. Okay, so here again uh, resistance. We've got a um, moving to the cloud. We've got a um, engulfing red candle. Okay, it does break to the upside, but it's it's a mess, isn't it? Basically, um, this is above price action, but um, it hasn't broken through the cloud. I mean, there's just numerous signals here, but I would have thought most of them will be false signals because the send lines won't have time to get in order. Um, so here, I'm going to break out to the downside. The send line lines are in order, but you go back 26 periods. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, it is just below price action. It's actually touching that candle, but it's above the cloud. So again, it's a, it's a false breakout. Um, oh, I'm obviously going to say this was a good breakout because it's a decent candle. It's below the cloud. Send lines are in order and it's moved down. Um, I use add-ons as well as as I said previously. So obviously here, 
we've broken to the downside. We're in order, okay, and also the RSI is trading underneath the 50 level. So that is giving us a good uh, downward bias, and it all it breaks uh, the turning line here, okay, at eight o'clock, um, eight o'clock this morning. Okay, should we do one more currency pair? Hope we get a better uh, better forecast, if you like, off uh, off this one. You are sterling. Uh, we could do euro dollar, but that was the one that we actually did the um, the slides on. Yeah, let's have a look back. See if we've got any flats. So what we're looking for is basically the send lines going flat, and that will basically warn of a, a period of consolidation. There's none on there. Let's change it to euro sterling. I mean, obviously there you saw a, let's just put it back, I think it was there, okay, I had a triangle formation on there, and I was expecting it to break to the downside, um, it did, just a lot later than I expected it to, and that was the target area, just in case we were wondering what uh, the lines on here were. Yeah, after a period of consolidation, there should always be um, a decent breakout. I mean, here, we'll probably get, you know, this pretty range bound market there. If we take it down to four hours, we're more likely to get the uh, the flat. Okay. And here's what I'm talking about. Obviously 26 26 and um, and the nine are flat here. Particularly the twenty six. Okay. As we said, forget the uh, forget the um, Cheeky span or the lagging line after the breakout. So here we've got a, a, a flat period, and that basically tells us that this is consolidating. Because we've got to remember how that's how that's made up. Because that's made up of um, the high and the low of the last 26 periods. So if that's flat, it's basically telling us that the high and the low hasn't been broken for the last 26 periods. Okay, does that make sense? And obviously, if you get a flat on the nine, it means the last nine periods, the high and the low of that nine nine hour period, if we're looking to hours, hasn't been broken. Okay, so it's it's consolidating. Because it's consolidating, we're making that flat. And again, here, there is a slight period of consolidation and a flat up to the top. Is it a big channel? <laughs> It's been a big channel for a long time. This is Euro Sterling uh, weekly chart. Okay, it has held uh, this channel uh, pretty well. Again, as I said earlier, you know it's about adding everything, all your knowledge in uh, to analyze in the market. So this actually has a bias to break to the to, to the upside after a period. Um, it could even be seen as a large flag formation, but the amount of time that it's actually been in this channel um, since January 2008, it's probably not. But the bias is to break to the upside. Now, everything that goes, is, you know, going on in in Europe still um, makes that obviously hard to believe. But the chart formation dictates that the upside. Has the bias. Okay, and again, you've seen some of my um, analysis on here. Um, looks like the writings of a madman. Um, here we've got a.
butterfly formation, okay, which worked out quite well uh, off the top. This I thought was a very choppy uh, three wave correction in three waves one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, didn't think that this low was going to get taken. Um, it was extremely close. Market then moved to the upside. I did think that we'd get a small move down and then and then a, a greater move higher. Uh, that hasn't that hasn't happened. So daily chart again it's used as resistance. The cloud cover there is very very thin, um, so it had a potential to break to the upside. And here. Okay, let's see if this was a false uh, breakout. Send lines are in order at the time of the break. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, that is above price action, but it's not above the cloud. Okay. Um, believe it or not, I use um, I'm used to this this chart package uh, because I've been using it for sort of past eight years, and it's quite it's quite easy to uh, to use and, and, and move around. Um, so yes, I do use Pro Real Time Charts for quick glances and to analyse my markets, and I use. Um, or, or, or our company uses CQG because for the analytical reports that we write, um, they are are the best. Basically, we can zoom in, we can show far clearer charts uh, on our analytical reports in the morning. Um, so, yes, I use these, and uh, I also use CQG for for, for work. Okay, would I have? Expected that to move back down, uh, even with the Chiku span um, above price action, but not out of the cloud. No, I wouldn't. Um, I actually thought we were going to get a retest and then a move back to the upside. This candle again, we we're talking about chart formations or candlestick formations, I should say, inside a Rami warning of investor indecision, and uh, and it's moved to the downside. Uh, the bias here. At the moment, is still lower. Okay, four-hour chart. This is what I'm talking about. You know, using in numerous time frames. I mean, you would have got a decent breakout candle there. This small inside a Rami candle, uh, warning warning of a, a potential top in place, uh, did reject on the first candle and then very bearish candle through. Obviously, everything in order at the end of uh, at the end of that candle. And then, if we look to, to more price action, okay, we move lower. No real. There's an inside of army there, but the low gets broken, not the high. Okay, then we move down again. Inside of army, the high of the previous candle gets broken, moves up. So, talking basic chart formations. Inside of army, low gets taken, moves down. And of course, bearish engulfing here, and this was um, at one of the send lines as well, the standard line. Okay, and the price has, has moved off. The bias, um, I have to say, really, um, the bias is still to the downside. It's still making lower lows and lower highs. Um, send lines are still in order. It's below the cloud. Here, obviously, we've got a breakout, comeback retest inside a Rami. Um, inside the cloud, again, not the best chart formations. Probably overnight here, yeah, 10 o'clock till um, 6 o'clock in the morning. But again, here, um, a bearish engulfing candle. Um, Near, near the high, not at the high, and then the market moves moves down. 
Again, not the best uh, reversal candle here. And it's just rejecting this cloud, but also, uh, obviously the cloud cover at the moment is, uh, is very, very thin. So there is a chance of a break to the upside. But I mean, if you, if you break it down to larger time frames, you know, this looks very bearish. That's not really a reversal candle on the, uh, on the daily. So it could well just be a correction. Still got lower lows, lower highs. Um, potential uh, hammer top there on the four hour and cloud resistance, albeit thin on the uh, on the hourly chart. And of course, that four hour candle hasn't uh, hasn't completed yet. Um, <laughs> I've never been, uh, never been asked a question about the background of the charts before, Mike. Um, no, it's, uh, again, it's saying that I've always used, so um, I like them to be quite bright, um, and I, I find it easy to use. Okay, we've got five minutes to go, guys and girls, so any questions? Um, with regards to Ishimoto or anything else that I can help you with. These are, this is UK time. So this is a four o'clock candle. Oh, sorry, yes, four o'clock. And this is the start of this four hour candle. That was 12 till 4. This is going to be 4 till 8. Okay, we're going to be hosting um, weekly webinars on FX3 from now on. Um, it's nice to be back. Um, I hope you've all found it informative and not too confusing. Um, as I've said previously, don't use it, Ishimoko as a um, as a pure um, charting tool. Um, even though it has got signals breakouts um, that, that can be used, uh, I'd use it as an overlay. Um, price action takes precedence, uh, and so does so does trend or sentiment and. Sentiment is what we want to be trading. That sentiment is what we trade at PIA, or what we analyze at PIA. Um, our website address is www.firstfortrading.com. Okay, first is in letters, four is in numerical, and then trading is obviously in letters. Yeah, I'll stick it in here. First. Yeah. No. Nice to be back, Bill. Okay, um, we're still in discussion about what next week's um, seminar is going to be about, uh, or webinar, I should say, these days. Um, but keep an eye out on... Um, on FX Street and have a look on the blog. I've, my blog's been updated on a regular basis now uh, on uh, the FX Forex Street .net, um, and all the information about uh, next week's webinar will be on there uh, as soon as it's available. Okay, guys, it's been really good to speak to you all. Um, good luck with your trading uh, this week, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye for now.